All right, hi guys. I wanted to create another video after I got everything connected. My first video was basically right after I finished assembling all of this. <clears throat> so now I've got my solar connected here, which I didn't have before. And just to kind of recap, this is my grid coming in, power going out to the critical load panel. This is just a sub panel breaker here. And I've got it set up in the location I want it. And I've jacked up the wheels so that if I try to move it, it doesn't roll. And then I can easily unjack it. Um, but I wanted to show some of the settings that I have for the uh, inverter. And I've got the manual here. Okay. And I wanted to go over two settings at least here that I've changed. <clears throat> and I, in my previous video, I mentioned how this manual is not really that uh, straightforward to understand. And so this is where the settings start, the list of settings. And then it goes by number one, number two, three, and so forth. And um, this is a screenshot of the app on the web for your account. And... It starts with common settings here, application settings, charge setting, and so on. There's a few pages of it. And um, so I wanted to talk about this setting here, which is called Battery Eco Enable. It's on setting 20 in the manual, but you know, it's starts out here like this and it goes down and so you would think you know setting one setting two setting three is battery which is near the top of the settings so you'd think that would be this guy but it's not it, it is setting 20 so you have to go to setting 20 <clears throat> which is power save function okay whether you want eco mode enabled or disabled and power save function is not the title of this, right? So that's another reason why this manual is not very clear uh, because the name of this setting is not the name that you'll find on the app. So it's really kind of confusing. And I uh, found a, a post by a guy that uh, um, had some information about settings that he used which talked about this setting and this other setting, which I'll talk about in a second too. Um, and there was another one, but that one didn't, uh, wasn't of interest to me. So I focused on these two. And without reading his post, I would not have been able to understood the scenario of what I wanted here based on reading this manual. Um, so anyway, I wanted to go through this. So <clears throat> setting eco battery enable or disable allows, uh, ba basically it, um, I, th I think what it does is it allows for a bypass mode to be enabled essentially from the grid to the house. <clears throat> Without this eco enabled, then the, the grid always goes through the inverter and, and uh, comes out. Now the reason why that's important is when the grid goes through the inverter and out to your house, there's a loss inside here. So if you, if you see a thousand watts going in from the grid, you might only see like 950 or 920 watts going out to the house uh, because of the loss that you have by grid bypass, I think it's called grid bypass. Um, if you have a thousand watts here, you've got a thousand watts here, there's no loss. So that's why this setting is important, at least it is to me. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then the next setting is this um, on grid end of discharge state of charge. I have it set to 30. That is setting 12 in the manual. So setting 12 in the manual is here. And again, if you look at this title of this setting, it's slightly different than what you see on the app. This says on grid 
end of discharge, state of charge. This doesn't say on grid, it just says end of discharge, battery discharge. Anyway, it's just more stuff that's confusing. So um, by default, it's set to 15%. And I have it set to 30 because I wanted a little more buffer than 15%. So I increased it a bit. And so what does that do? By having this enabled and this enabled, what does that do? So when it, the battery here gets to 30%, actually, it's, it's, you're setting minus 1%. So if I have it set to 30%, when it reaches 29%, it will disconnect the battery and, and do the bypass mode. So then the grid kicks in and supplies power to the house. <clears throat> and of course, that's assuming that your solar isn't generating, right? If your solar is generating, then it's not going to go to bypass. It'll take power from the grid as long as it's enough power uh, to, to supply your house. And, and even charge the battery if it's, you know, excess power. Um, and this is like my setting in, you know, in the morning after, after the night, my battery goes down to, this was 38% this morning. And it's not, uh, it's still early morning, it's not bright. So there's only about two, you know, 400 watts of power being generated here. <clears throat> which um, is not quite enough to supply the house, and so there's additional power coming from the battery to supply everything. But once the sun gets up high enough, uh, then uh, there'll be more watts here, it'll be powering the house, and it'll be charging the battery. So when it gets down to the 29%, this will turn off. Again, assuming there's no power generated here, it'll go into bypass mode, and um, then when the sun comes back up and there's power being generated here, it will start charging the battery. When the battery gets to 10% above your setting here, then, so and then in this case, when it gets to 40%, then it will remove the bypass and start supplying power to the house from the solar and battery. Uh, depending on how much solar energy you have. If, there, if there's, as I say, if there's excess power to supply to the house, then it charges the battery. So when it switches between the bypass and not bypass, meaning it's coming from here, uh, there is a slight um, fraction of a second interruption in power in the house, but that doesn't really bother me too much. It's, it's like a little flicker when it switches between these two modes. Um, so that's why I have these settings this way, so that um, not having this loss going through the inverter uh, for the grid to supply. The advantage of this, of having it go through here and out to the house, is you don't get that little flicker because you're basically on battery backup. Um, but you're constantly losing 50 to 100 watts of power when the grid is going through here. Um, so anyway, that's why I have it set up this way. And then the other thing is you can play around with this setting if you know something is coming up in the, you know, in the near future. Like for example, my utility has informed us that they will be shutting power down on a particular date because they're going to replace some um, old uh, power poles and on that day they're going to shut the power off to to replace them and so if on that day when that comes <clears throat> if it's a if it's a rainy day for example a day or two before that i can increase this to say let's say 50 percent or so so that i don't get below 50 percent so, such that when the day the power is shut off. I have enough buffer here to supply power to my house for the few hours that, you know, like the six hours or so that the power will be out by the grid. And it's raining, right? So I'm not getting power from here. If it's going to be a sunny day, then I don't really care in that case because I'll have enough power from here to generate for the house and charge the battery. So that's one way that you can play around with this setting here. 
um, anyway, so I just wanted to give that update, uh, and that's it.